Hallelujah. Welcome to Prayer Banquet. Let's just reverence the King who has given us this opportunity to come again your way and to also know Him. All we seek to do in Prayer Banquet is to establish that open access uh, through the understanding that God has granted us through the Scriptures so that we can see God for who He really is and then draw forth or receive from Him all He has given to us freely in Christ Jesus. Thank you, Father, for your Spirit that is released in our midst, the Spirit of Truth, the Spirit of Wisdom, the Spirit of Counsel, the Spirit of Knowledge and in the fear of the Lord, the Spirit of Might that is quickening us, straining us from within us, causing us to do to do your will. For it is God that is at work in us. You are the one who teaches us, who trains us, equips us, yet the one who is at work in us and through us to do your will. You give us the desire. You put in us the desire and the ability to walk in the light as you are in the light. Thank you, Father. Thank you for understanding. Thank you for the scales of religion are falling off. Thank you for the, the, the veil of traditional thinking and unbelief is falling off. Hallelujah to the love life that is in the truth of Christ. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' powerful name, we have prayed. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Welcome again to Prayer and Banquet. We've been learning how to and um, seeing from the Word of God that God loves us. A new vocabulary is in town. That is grace and truth, which is in the person of Jesus Christ. If you talk about love, then you are going to talk about grace. You cannot talk about love and not express the grace of God. The grace of God is not a subject matter. It is not a teaching, even though it is being taught. It is not a subject, even though people have made it subject, as in uh, there are many steps in the kingdom of God, and this is the grace message, this is the grace. No, the grace of God is a person. Jesus Christ and what we do is to reveal the person everything about the person of Christ is centered on grace everything about the person of Christ is centered on the love so if you cannot talk about the love of God and not talk about the grace of God the grace of God is not God's license so that you can misbehave no it's not God's license it's God's love in spite of your flaws that's the difference. It is God giving you ability to walk in the way you ought to walk. It's God showing you kindness when you don't deserve it. It's God showing you mercy when you don't deserve it. It's God lifting your head up, lifting the head of the common person and lifting the head of, as we are saying in, in, in local palace, lifting the head of those who have been bowed down and giving them a status with him. Hallelujah. Can you imagine just walking the street and then you are being taken from the streets and then taken to the hierarchy or a monarchy, depending on in the United Kingdom, for instance. You're picked from the streets and then picked up to become a part of the monarchy and then you are given uh, 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 access to the, the throne and you become a heir to the throne. I know it doesn't work that way, but that's what the Bible teaches us. It says we have been raised because that is our destiny, original destiny. We walked away from the kingdom palace. We walked away because of foolishness and, and, and our, our consciousness of trying to live by ourselves, independent of ourselves. And look at what we have created, a world of chaos and mess because we are trying to live independent of His love. And now God is restoring that and God has restored that through the person of Jesus. And so as we begin to look at the unveiling of God's love, we are looking at the full capture. How does God see me? <clears throat> How does God relate with me? How does God respond to me? This is key because if you cannot pray, if you don't know if you are going to get a response, your prayer will only become that of a religion, that of a beggar, that of a slave, that of a traditional thinking. You feel your rights and religious routines because you are not convinced if God will respond to you. You are hoping He will respond to you. You are wishing He will respond to you. But God doesn't pray that way. He is a certain being. The Bible speaks about who he is. He is faithful. That means outside of God, you cannot see anything that is no one that is as faithful as he is. He has never lied. He cannot change. The Bible says he, he, there is no variable of shadow or turning. You know, many people turn because of events. You know, people change political alliances because their political parties disappointed them. They change political alliances because of what they will benefit in the, in the long run. And they change association because of the relationship didn't work. People get divorced because <clears throat> they say, we have uh, disputes that we could not resolve. And in court, they call it unresolved uh, uh, issues. You know, people change relationships and alliances. People change associations with clubs or football teams. Now, but God, He doesn't change. 
And we see it's consistent from every day, every minute, every hour. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So because he's consistent, he's reliable. Because he's consistent, he's trustworthy. Because he's consistent, then you can know that you will get the same response every day of your life. And so that is how we relate with him. So if you know him as a God who's faithful, who doesn't change, who is consistent, then you need to know who he is and how he responds so that you can be assured you will always get the same response. You see, many times people just pray because without even knowing if they will get a response from heaven. God has already assured us. He said, come unto me. I will give you rest. So if you are not in rest, probably you have not met him yet. You may have said, oh, I pray to him. No, because meeting him is meeting rest. Meeting him is entering into the place of rest. And so today we are looking at what are the things, that, the stumbling blocks that are preventing us or perspectives of how we relate with him that is affecting us from enjoying the rest that he has given to us. And one of the things we found out that first we must understand God's identity. God is love. He is identified as love. And this love is not the common cultural love that we talk about. Somebody says, I love you. And then two years later, he says, I divorce you. I don't want to have anything to do with you. I hate you. That's not the love we're talking about. That is eros. That is the love that is only beauty. The, the only, in the eye of the beholder, you are beautiful until you are no longer beautiful. That's erotic. That's not uh, the love that we are referring to. It's not the love that you say, okay, I love my nation. I love my country. I love my visa. I love my food. I love my plate. I love my dress. That's not the love we're talking about. That could be based on certain values or belief system that you have identified with. But no, we're talking about the love that has no conditions. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, Father, thank you for this love. Thank you for loving me this way. The love that has no conditions. You see, Really? Yes, God has no conditions. You see, religion has given us a conditional God that if you do this, he will do that for you. If you give this, he will give that to you. If you don't know this, he will not do that for you. If you don't do that, he will take that from you. No, the Bible says in Romans chapter 5, I'm going to quickly read it. Romans chapter 5 and verse 8, showing us how God is and how he demonstrated his love towards us. Romans chapter 5, I'm going to read from the 8th verse of the scripture now i'm reading the passion translation it says but christ proved god's passionate love for us by dying in our place while we were still lost and ungodly i want you to read listen to that word why you were an ungodly person why you didn't like god why you hated god why you said God was the one responsible for your wickedness, which God was not. Why you were abusing God and insulting God and call yourself atheist or you rejected God, Christ was demonstrating his love towards you. You see, if there is a condition for loving us, then God will only love those who love him. If there was a condition for loving us, God will only love those who stand by him. If there's a condition for loving us, God will only stick with those who stick with Him. You know, you can have friends that stick with you because you stick with them. It, men are fickle. They can only follow those who follow them. They only follow those who are associated with, who stand with the same things they stand for. Now, that is man for you. The Bible says God is not a man. God is not a man. So he doesn't stand with you because you hated you. You don't stand for him. No. He says, while we were yet sinners, while we were yet in our wickedness, while we were yet rebelling against him, while we were yet in of offending him, while we were yet doing things that, that made him upset, he was still loving us. You see, God doesn't approve of the sin we do because sin really destroys us. It really doesn't destroy him. It destroys us. It hurts him. It destroys us. Sin affects man, but while we were yet in our sin, Jesus died for you. So God loves you, sinner. <laughs> God loves you, you that you have, fault, you have faults. And so when you understand this, you will have compassion for those who have flaws because we are all the same. No matter how right you have been in your eyes, you are still a man with flaws. <laughs> no matter how good you are in your eyes, you are still a man with weaknesses. And guess what? God loves you. And so, because God loves you without conditions, 
God can help you without condition. See, Christ died for you while we were yet sinners. If Jesus can die for you, can you imagine that the most important thing a man can do for a person, someone, is to die for the person? Can give up his life for the person? Can give up his life in exchange for the person? So, I mean, Jesus took your place in exchange for your foolishness and my foolishness. Jesus took our place. What else can God not do that he has not done through what Jesus did? So if God can give up Jesus, can you imagine giving up someone for crucific crucifixion? For crucifying, to crucifying, cru crucifixion, I mean. <laughs> can you imagine God giving up Jesus for our sake, even when we didn't deserve it? Is it a house, a car, a child that he can not be told from you? How many prayers did you pray before you gave you Jesus? How many fasts did you fast before you gave you Jesus? How many doors did you knock before you gave you Jesus? None. You were yet in the place of rebellion when Jesus died. That is what we are talking about. While we were yet sinners, he died for us. See, this is where the love without conditions begins. It begins with realizing that God loves me not because I did everything right. God loves me not because I got everything right. God loves me not because I know how to pray right. Oh, you have been told 10 laws of prayer, 15 laws of prayer. No, the one law of prayer is love. Hallelujah. It's just to respond to the love of God. That's the law of prayer. You see, when the response is what people call faith, when you understand how much God loves you, you would respond without even thinking of faith. Jesus, Jesus acknowledged faith. He didn't just go about bragging about faith. He was teaching the disciples to have faith in God. That was respond to the love of God. You see, you see how I heal the sick without conditions. You see how I raise the dead without conditions. You see how I respond to the centurion when he asked me to come and I spoke a word and something happened. So have faith, respond to God that way. Just come and receive. That's what Jesus was saying. Have the faith of God. Don't say have the faith of man. Have the faith or respond to what God is showing to you. Respond to the love of God. See, there's only one law of prayer. The love of God. How much God loves you will change how you respond to it. How much you have the, the revelation that God will never leave you. It depends how you respond to him. How much of the love you are convinced is for you determines how you surrender to it. Oh, thank you, Father, for loving me while I was yet a sinner, while I was yet separated from you, while I was yet in rebellion, while I was yet in rebellion and disobedience. You loved me. Hallelujah. Ooh, glory to God. You loved me in spite of all my flaws. You loved me in spite of all my mistakes. You loved me in spite of all my missteps. You loved me in spite of all my shame, my shame, my guilt, my condemnation. You loved me and yet you wiped me. Like a mother who cleans her baby up of all the mess that she has, the baby has gathered by playing in the sand and the mud. You loved me and you cleansed me with your blood. Hallelujah. Your blood has cleansed me and made me whole. Your blood has cleansed me and forgiven me of my past. Your blood has washed me totally and giving me a new life and new reason to live and be hallelujah love came to me while i was a sinner love came to me while i was imperfect love came to me while i was still ungodly Thank you for loving me without conditions. Thank you, hallelujah, without conditions. Now I can come without conditions, just saying, Lord, this is how, who I am. If you can accept me without conditions, then you can bless me without conditions. If you can accept me without conditions, you can bless me without conditions. If you can accept me without conditions through Jesus, you can bless me because of Jesus without condition. Hallelujah. And so I thank you for blessing me with forgiveness of sins. I thank you for blessing me with favor. I thank you for blessing me with your with your mercy. I thank you for blessing me with your grace. I now know that you are for me. Thank you for loving me without conditions. I love you, Lord. I surrender my all to you and I'm ready to leave. Thank you for giving me a new life to live because of your love. Amen and amen and amen. Amen. We'll pick it up again as we study and unveil God's love. Remember, you are blessed. No man can reverse it because God loves you without conditions. Then he, will, he has blessed you without conditions. You are blessed. I'll see you next time. Amen.